What do you mean bark says bite? Bark says bite. Oh man. Bark, back not bark. Bards. 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 Bark. Bark. Bark has bite. Oh, bards. <laughs> the drink. <laughs> I know barks. Barks has. Bite. I know, but you know what? I never. I haven't heard that in forever. Bards has bite. The 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 brew beer. No, nobody talks about it anymore. Yeah, they still sell it. I saw it not too long ago. And this this, this movie went back to like the 90s. I got my table. Which is weird. They actually gave it to me uh, on a Saturday, which I thought they were gonna deliver it on a Monday. So Amazon, I it. yeah, Amazon came. They gave me my table. And, Amazon uh, delivers at like the weirdest times. Just any any time it's available, they just drop it off. They don't care. I, I, I'm surprised they didn't uh, deliver it at like 12 o'clock at night. Sometimes sometimes I order stuff and then they says delivered, and then you don't get it for three days. I don't know. Maybe because they have a back. They have a backup. Like they, they have the Amazon warehouses that actually have delivery trucks from Amazon. And then they have third party deliveries through people like one of us can get a van and deliver stuff and who knows what's going to happen then. But I, I mean, I don't know what the pay is like. And Pure Later delivers for them sometimes. Actually, Pure Later is the worst. They are supposed to deliver me something uh, last week and we had a like we had the snowstorm and they <laughs> they wrote couldn't deliver because there was snow in the pathway, but it wasn't a lot. They just had to walk on it. Right. And I actually cleaned the snow twice. So it was, it was passable. They wouldn't deliver it. And so, and I think the guy just didn't feel like doing it and he passed off his deliveries to other people. So the next day, somebody else had to deliver it. They're acting a lot like Amazon did. I had a delivery that was supposed to show up. I think four or five days later, a week later, forget if the guy texted me or called me. But he said, oh, I can't find where you live. I was like, man, I live on the, on the Dakari service road and uh, Cote St. Luke. It happens all I the mean, time. Yeah. And it's not like I'm living in the middle of nowhere. It's like if you know the city and you don't know where those two streets are, just quit driving because you don't know the city at all. Last year they did that, though. They said they couldn't deliver because they couldn't find my address, which, which, is, which wasn't true. They, they stopped in front of the house. And we had a big box. It was a big box. I forget what it is. Diapers and a bunch of stuff or whatever. Well, before, right? I, I guess, no, not last year. After after our daughter was born. Oh, so it's around uh, September. Yeah, it, September. And they wouldn't they wouldn't bring the box up the stairs. But I saw the truck outside. And then they just took off. And, and, then, and then you get a message saying, purely you couldn't deliver to the address. Couldn't find the address. Maybe the person that won't lift the box. I don't know. I, I, just to say, the third-party delivery people... You know, the people that are working for themselves never have an issue with them. It's always pure later does an issue. Really? And they don't use Canada Post anymore, Amazon, because Canada Post, I guess they can't keep up or they, they cost more or whatever. So they go with whoever's cheaper to deliver. Yeah. Uh, we're we're going to have pure later. Let's just put it this way. There is definitely room for efficiency. Yeah. And I'm talking to the guy who works at pure later. <laughs> talking you about know? the driver. That's exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Even in the warehouse. Trust me. Working there, I seen it many guys working there will tell you the same thing if you're smart enough working up here later you'll see that there's definitely room for increased efficiency or there's room for for improvement let's just put it that way i'm not saying they're doing a terrible job but there is room for improvement you tell them you tell pure later they suck i'm gonna walk in there next week and i'm gonna tell them you tell them mr mike said pure later sucks and i stand by it all right, I'm gonna tell it straight to the janitor around there. I'm like, hey, you go to the manager and you tell the manager, my friend, Mr. Mike said in his podcast, you guys suck at delivering. <laughs> All right, I'll tell them. I'll, I'll tell them that next week. Now I don't know if it's gonna be on a Monday or I'll, or he'll get that message uh, a year later because that's how long it takes it to get a message. In all fairness, I mean, it's it's not often, but you know, a couple of times I have issues with Pure Later. The other company I had terrible problems with in the past, which I, we don't use anymore unless for some obscure reason you have to. UPS have had some experiences here, but they have drop-off centers. So they're usually pretty good. Mm-hmm. And they'll tell you, go here, you have 15 days to get it. Okay, fine. It's annoying. You got to go get it or whatever. Canada Post, it brings it to the pharmacy near the house. It's annoying, but if you have, it's better off at the pharmacy than on somebody else's car or porch or whatever. DHL, DHL is terrible. Absolutely terrible. 
Twice I had dealings with them over the last 10 years. Every time I had a problem, they were supposed to deliver something that I didn't choose for them to deliver. The company or whatever product I ordered. I remember I ordered a, a chest protector for ball hockey, playing ball hockey goalie. Mm-hmm. Nice one. You know, got a good deal from the States. It was cheaper to buy the, the in, in the States with the exchange rate to ship to Canada than it was to buy in Canada. I couldn't believe it. It was like it was like 50% cheaper. So, uh, yeah, and I'm not joking. So I bought it. I was so excited for it. They didn't deliver it. They went, they they like, oh, you weren't home. I was home. They they just didn't ring the doorbell. The guy, or they didn't pass by. I was totally there. Anyway, so they give you the they give you the runaround and then they give you the sticker the second day. They're like, we tried to deliver it a second time. You weren't there. We're bringing it to our location in Jesus. I don't remember where it was. It's far. So I drive all the way there to get it. I got the sticker. They don't have the package. So where the goddamn package? It's in the truck. But where's the goddamn truck? Well, the guy's off. But you gave it to me yesterday. So it's supposed to be delivered after whatever, one o'clock, two o'clock. And I show up at four before they close. They just didn't have it or the person didn't want to get it. And let me guess, it took you, what, a week later to get it? I was pissed and the manager wasn't there. So I go home, call them the next day, talk to the manager. Oh, my goddamn package. Where the F is it? Oh, okay. Sorry, sir. It took a week to get it. They, they were just horsing around. It was so disorganized. That's, re- that, that's, that's what I thought. It usually takes you a week to get something that you should have had the following day. First world problems, right? We got to complain about packages and there's war going on. You know, <laughs> I'm not making fun of that stuff. I'm just saying, you know, this is the distraction. Anyways, po- our podcast and everything on Twitter is a total distraction of what's going on. So if you want to tune out from pandemic and everything going on, and you don't want to talk about, we're not talking about that stuff here, but I'm just saying, you know, first world problems. That's what we're complaining about. But it's like the simplest thing. It's like you go to the, you go to Tim Hortons, you go to McDonald's, you get a coffee. Can I have a medium coffee with two sugars? What do they do? They give you a small coffee with three sugars. Do I need to speak in French? Don't mind café avec deux sucres, pas de lait. You show up, what do they do? No sugars, all milk. Okay, I'll speak to you in English. I speak to you. It doesn't matter. It's French or English. It doesn't matter. They just, they still mess it up. It's like, oh. Although I, I, I got to say on the way to work, sometimes, you know, you're, you you get up in the morning and like, I mean, depends on the weather and whatever. I get up at 536. I'm running around. I'm like, okay, I forget my coffee on the table. That happens all the time. Forget my coffee on the table. I stop off at McDonald's on the way to work and I get the coffee from the drive through. Usually it's pretty good. And it's always the same woman, usually who, who uh, takes your order. And then you go to the next window and you, you know, they give it to you. It's somebody else. It's usually the same people. They always do a fantastic job. And, and thinking about that place, that McDonald's, that particular McDonald's, the last time I got coffee from them, which was probably in uh, December, early December, I was running. No, I wasn't running late. I was, I was pretty like, I was pretty early. I just, I just didn't, forgot my coffee. Well, I was going through the drive-through, and there was a lot of cars. There was like tons of cars. I, it's hard to describe it for people that are listening, but you could come in from two directions. There's one entrance to the drive-through with two mic with two like speakers. So either way, you still got to go in through the same lane, but you're coming from both ends. So there's a standoff between me and a lady in uh, in front of me. She's got a Mercedes, and I got my whatever Honda I got. So I let her go. I said, I waved her. I said, go, it's okay. Fine. I, I got there first. I was waiting for 10 minutes because it was busy that day. I just let her go, whatever. It's easier the way she was positioned. So she went and then I got to the order. I ordered, got to the window and the woman's like, you know, you don't have to pay. I'm like, why not? She's like the woman in front paid for you. I said, oh yeah, that was nice. So I get there, I get my coffee and the woman waited in her car on the side with her daughter. And um, I think Maybe her two daughters, two daughters in the back or one daughter. Can't remember. But there was she had she had somebody in the back and she rolled down her window. She says, you're a nice guy. Thank you for letting me go. She's like, that's the first time this ever happened to me. And she and she must have been in her late 50s or something. Wow. I said, you just made my day. <laughs> you just made my day. Like, when was the last time somebody bought me a coffee randomly like that? So that was nice. That's a good experience. All this because Pure Later sucks. Starbucks at the AMC? Uh, or it was next to it. I, I know it was around that area, but I forget where exactly. Okay, so I think everybody knows what Starbucks is, and AMC is a movie theater downtown. I'm not sure if everybody has AMC everywhere, so it's a movie theater. Yeah, it's the old form where the Montreal Canadiens of the NHL used to play. Originally. Yeah, originally. Anyway, uh, when I went to Starbucks, there was a girl that was uh, serving me. At first, I told her in French, 
I like to have, I think it was a coffee and a piece of cake or something. She's like, uh, I don't, I don't understand. I'm like, all right, then I'll speak to her in English. I'm like, uh, I'll have uh, a coffee with a piece of cake. And she's like, I still don't understand. I'm like, well, I mean, in Quebec here, those are the two languages that one of her colleagues came by and she's like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to help you, sir. Fine. So I told her what I wanted. Then she told me, oh, well, she's new and all she speaks is Spanish. I was like, oh man. I mean, the yeah. fact that you don't know how to speak English or French in this part of Canada, like. Yeah, I think, I think for people that they're that not from Quebec, maybe in the U.S. there's a lot, because there's a lot of Spanish speaking uh, in the U.S. But maybe if you're not from Quebec, you don't understand. In Quebec, the Francophone government always bangs the drum on you can't speak english we have language laws against speaking english and things like that it's really mind-blowing when you people hear about we got language police here we do right they go around giving people fines if there's too much english on their sign or if they didn't if their website is only advertised in english like ridiculous things normally when you go to the store you usually have an issue with people not speaking English. So you try to speak to them in French. And then, I mean, we have a lot of immigration here, right? I mean, uh, I know our premier has been trying to uh, suppress the immigration for the last couple of years, but we, we have a lot of immigrants, especially coming to Montreal. So when you go order a coffee, you expect to be served in English or French. And for Anglophones, you definitely want to be able to access both. And Francophones, a lot of them just want French, whatever the case may be. So Mike's particular situation, not speaking either language, it's even worse of an issue. And I want to say for the Francophones, it's it's hard to describe. It's like a weird experience. That shouldn't be an issue, right, Mike? Like, it shouldn't be an issue. Like, they're going to come. The best time to learn a language is sometimes is on the job. No? The thing is that sometimes, let's say if you're in a rush and you want a coffee, you want something simple. Right. And it's going to take you like five minutes or 10 minutes just to get one thing. That's going to be very frustrating. Like, I mean, I did it, but if I, if I was in a rush or I had a really bad day, I just want one thing. It's very tough for me to get it because that other person can't speak either language. Yeah. It's not the person's fault, but I'm saying in Quebec, we're less tolerant for that kind of stuff, especially if you don't speak English or French. And I've noticed that if you're not in a rush, you probably would have been like, oh, Okay, well, you'll point to this and then, you know, get what you want type of thing. But it, it's a, a language is a touchy subject here. Yeah, very true. Like their priorities on languages here in Quebec, I find it's, I wouldn't say useless. It's such a big priority. They should, they should prioritize other things besides just the languages. I find it's a lot of wasted time. I mean, if you're speaking to a pro francophone separatist or somebody who's like, their culture is disappearing, it's not disappearing. It's, that's just what they say. They'll reiterate that, right? Like they'll they'll tell you that, yeah, it's a big deal, but it's really not a big deal. The big deal is that they should be teaching everybody to be bilingual or trilingual and not just unilingual because in francophone settings in the school boards and whatnot, they don't teach them practically any English. And in the English school boards, they actually teach them a lot of French. There's immersion programs, bilingual programs. Uh, it's a couple other like different variations on, on, the, on the teaching English or French programs. So like English school boards do a good job of that stuff. It's just, it's just a back and forth battle. Anyway, we could talk about this all day. You know, yeah. language issues is a touchy subject. Like a lot of people I know that would come from different countries, uh, whether it's Afghanistan, China, uh, South America, the Middle East, a lot of them that arrive in Quebec, they don't stay here long. I don't yeah, know how many people leave. I met, they just left. They would stay here maybe a couple of months, maybe a couple of years, and then they would just leave. Because a lot of them, they would feel that all this focus on language is a waste of their time. It's like, they let, let's say if they want to start a business. And they have to they have to put the language laws as one of their big priorities. I mean, for them, they just much rather sell or serve whatever they can, make a business, of course. And well, they basically want to have a smooth running business and not have the language police interfere all the time. What what year was the referendum? Ninety five. Okay. So in 1995, that was the second referendum, right? Yeah. So first, in, 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 in the first one was? In 76. 76. So, so the second referendum, we had in 1995, the government had everybody go to the polls to, to vote on whether they wanted to separate Quebec from Canada. And it was 51% to 49%? Yep. Apparently they said there was 50,000 vote difference between the two. Okay. So 50,000 vote difference between the two. 51% said no and 49% said yes. Fine. But 
uh, leading up until that, plus after, they said with all the English speaking people that we lost, probably would it equal to about 4 million English speaking in Quebec extra today on top of what we have. Even in 76, they said there was about between 400, between 400 to a half a million Anglophones that left. In and if you do the math on how many of them were families and, and would have had kids here, yeah, then you would have probably had between then and now an extra 4 million English speaking people, give or take. Yeah, this is what I heard. Right? That's it. This is what I heard. This is like back from before uh, Expo 67. This is where we had it at Montreal. Um, if anybody came, if anybody came to Montreal or is planning to come to Montreal, there's a man-made island where back in 1967, Canada celebrated a hundred years. Apparently that was the pinnacle era in Montreal where there's so many immigrants that came here and some people saw Montreal like the next New York. Uh, apparently even the mayor of Montreal wanted to put the city on the map, like a world city, like it was going to be compared to Sydney or uh, Rio or Los Angeles or New York. Like it was really supposed to be known. After when Charles de Gaulle came here, when he said, vive le Québec, vive, uh, there was a separatist, I should say a revolution. Well, they call it the quiet revolution. Yeah, a movement. A movement, exactly. It was a separatist movement that came out of that. Ever since then, 1967, so many people left. Plus with the language laws, the referendum, it caused so many people to flee Quebec, the province of Quebec. And from what I heard, if we never had the, re the, the, the quiet revolution or the uh, Francophone uprising or the separatist movement, Montreal today would be about the same size as maybe Chicago or New York. Toronto got built because everybody went there. All the businesses went too. Yeah. So it, take even the Toronto GTA area, which is like the greater Toronto area plus downtown Toronto. There's roughly right now about six and a half million. And that's not including Hamilton, which is just south of that area. You take all the suburbs, the GTA area plus Hamilton and the suburbs, you got about seven and a half million people. That's not even including Niagara Falls. And the next 10 years, some people are predicting Toronto is going to be about maybe 10 million people, 9, 10 million people. That's if it continues. And I don't see I don't see Montreal with the suburbs being more than five and a half million. It'll grow, but I don't see it going past five and a half, maybe five million. Everyone's going to be living in the clouds. That's it. We'll see. Or, uh, you know, with whether it's it'll be, uh, space cars or uh, floating homes or I don't know, or floating dogs. You ever watch uh, Altered Carbon on Netflix? No. Okay. If for anybody who's got a Netflix subscription, which is I think 90% of people do, and I'm just making up the statistic, Altered Carbon mm -hmm. is a very interesting uh, two, right now, two season series. The gist of it is that uh, they discover this element or this technology on a planet, you know, because uh, humans are able to space travel at this point. It's later in the future and all this stuff. And they built something called stacks and they stick them in the back of your cortex in your neck. And it basically uh, contains your essence of your consciousness or your soul. And if your body dies, they could take it out, put it in a new body and you're alive again. You just, and you could, if you're a white, you know, you're a white guy and you die and you take it out, you could become, so you could become a black man if you wanted to, or you could become a woman, whatever you want it. You could become a, somebody with Asian, it, did, it doesn't matter. Like you could become anything you want. Like the idea of racism and all that's, it's gone. Like it's, it's completely gone because you're never the same person from one day to the next necessarily. And there's some people that jump from body to body. But anyways, in this, in this world, like if you're on earth or wherever you are, they have city towers and, and apartments that rise, 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 rise. Even some of the rich, rich live in the clouds. Imagine a densely populated like Montreal or Chicago or New York, but like millions and millions of people just living in apartment buildings that are just super tall. And like, so anyways, it's a crazy series. Um, I don't want to give it away or anything. If you haven't watched it, watch season one. Season two is shorter. I think season two is with Anthony uh, Mackie, the guy that plays Falcon in, in Avengers. Oh, okay. And that's the best part is that the actor, it doesn't matter who the actor is. They could play the same character and be a different actor, right? And, and actually the main character from the first season, he get 
he's actually he, he you see like glimpses of him in the first season in like three different bodies because he's having flashbacks of like what's happening and it's a little bit graphic so don't you know it's not for kids or anything like that it's, it's just for adults it's rated r but um it's it's really it's a good show it's actually based on a book oh huh. yeah that, that's my little plug for a show i like anyways we're gonna do a wrong answers only tweet your neighbor rings the doorbell and asks to borrow some eggs what do you do Wrong answers only. Steven writes, ask her to borrow milk. It was a little laughy face, LOL. Pierce writes, given the ones I cracked this morning, they had gone off. <laughs> Don't know why, but that makes me think of uh, the eggs cracking in Ghostbusters, the original Ghostbusters movie when they're all on the, the counter and they all start popping up. Carmichael writes, give them Cadbury mini eggs. Lee Whittaker says, ask them to return them when they're done. Joseph writes one or two. Cairo66 writes, wish them good luck. And he's got a gif of a Jurassic Park a moment when they're opening up a, a, an egg. I think it's a raptor egg. J. Cacawino Canisum. I hope I said that right, J. I know you've been following me for a while. I left my chicken at the farm. <laughs> I like that. Shannon writes, and I, th I think it's Shannon. It's spelled S-H-A-N-Y-N. Zelinsky. She writes, ask the girls, and she's got a picture of three hens. Rick A writes, scrambled or fried? Angie writes, hand over Malta Easter eggs I got at Walgreens. <laughs> That's good. Lisa writes, tell them I'm vegan and have no eggs. <laughs> Uh, that's some good ones. <laughs> uh, last one. Mike on Twitter. Not me. Not the other Mike. A different Mike that follows me. He's got an Italian flag and a Canadian flag. And he's still not me. And pizza and a hockey emoji beside his name. Uh, Italian Habs Mike. He writes, he says, call the cops and say he has a huge gun and he's threatening to shoot everyone in the house. Well, that's one way to get rid of somebody. Hey, eh, Mike? <laughs> not too shabby, Mr. D. Oh. Yeah, not you know? too shabby. Yeah, exactly. Not too shabby, Mr. D. So, having said that, we're going to end it. This has been the Mr. Mike podcast, wrong answers only, with Mr. D and Mr. Mike. Thank you for tuning in. You can follow us on Mr. Mike MTL on Twitter, wrong answers MTL on Twitter. Same thing on Getter for Mr. Mike MTL, but screw Getter. It sucks. So, don't even go on there if you don't have to. And also, Mr. Mike MTL Poetry on Instagram. Don't forget, if you go to my pinned tweet on either both Twitter accounts, our rss.com website's there. You can check out our homepage for all the episodes, and you can listen to us on almost any platform. Subscribe, retweet, share it with your friends, at your family, anybody on social media. It would be we'd greatly appreciate it as we are growing, and this is only month two now, Mike. It's the beginning, but it's month two, and we're already getting a lot of good feedback from people, and now we're gonna get analytics so for ourselves, and uh, this is what it is. This is a conversation about whatever we want, and it's a people conversation. We do Twitter wrong answer only, and also, you got something you wanna share, you got a website, you got something cool, you do some art, you wanna share, we'll talk about you. And for the future, season two, We'll hopefully do some good interviews with some people. We'll start small. Obviously, we're not gonna, we're not that popular. We're not gonna have The Rock on here or John Cena, but you know, maybe not yet. We may, or we're not a Joe Rogan experience here, but we're the, uh, you know, <laughs> the Mr. Not Mike yet, experience, uh, two Mr. Mike experiences. But uh, you know, we're, we'll uh, we'll try to do some interviews with people, and and then uh, yeah, that's it. Everybody, thanks for tuning in, everybody, and we're gonna see you next time.